G'day mates, today's video we're going to talk about Epic adding the no build game mode to Fortnite. So the discussion of whether no building was going to stay or go has been ended. No building is going to be a feature of Fortnite potentially forever now. And it's its own game mode that Epic is developing on its own separate to the regular Fortnite playlist. Also, we had the announcement of the $450,000 tournament with Fortnite and Twitch. But this isn't just for the big creators to play. There's a whole bunch of tournaments with some weird formats that even you guys are going to be able to earn some money and this isn't just for the big pros a bunch of creators have been reached out to they get to make their own tournament formats and it's looking like it's going to be a banger of a series also we have the arena points resetting the preseason has ended and we have cash cups taking place in less than a week but a lot of people asking what was the point of preseason if epic changed nothing about the game competitively so there's a lot to talk about it let's just jump into it it looks like we finally got the answer to what is happening with building in pubs. I mean, kind of. So right now, building in pubs is glitched and pubs still have no building. But this is clearly a glitch because Epic has made a no build mode for every single game mode. Solos, trios, squads, and duos. So they are clearly keeping no building as a featured game mode within Fortnite. They're even developing it as I talked about in a recent video. They're making updates specifically surrounding the no build game mode. And this is what everyone was asking for. In my opinion, it's what everyone was asking for whether you don't like no building in fortnite or whether you do like no building in fortnite it still makes sense to have it be its own game mode so many people have come back to the game so many content creators are loving it that is just a bunch of revenue that can go toward the game that you love even if you enjoy playing it with building which is me i don't enjoy playing the no building but it's an absolute no-brainer to make it its own game mode and they're developing it properly as well which i think might actually keep some of these players around i feel like without constant development and really treating it like a separate game i don't don't think it's going to last in the long term, but if they keep making really good updates, like changing the way the weapons work or adding new weapons or changing the map, it could be something incredibly special. So I'm happy to see Epic did this. If you guys are in the boat who want to be building right now, I know it's frustrating, but it looks like Epic did intend for building to come back today in public matches. It's just a bug. We have a tweet from iFireMonkey talking about this. It makes perfect sense. The building was supposed to return today and it looks like hopefully it will. We don't know whether it's going to come back fully or whether it's going to be that kind of phased out building like we talked about with you know the seven versus the io and you can only build in certain areas we're gonna have to wait and see because as of right now me filming this video there is a no building game mode but there is also no building still in pubs so i'm sorry i can't give you more information i'm just going off what we do know but we now know 100 no building is remaining in fortnite for the long term we just had the announcement of the $450,000 Twitch Rivals Tournament. Now, this is going to be featured in the no build game mode, but there's also some mini tournaments going on. And unlike Twitch Rivals, where it's normally all just the creators playing, getting money, you guys actually get a chance to play as well. So let me run through exactly what's going on. Because these are going to be really, really big tournaments that I think are going to be really, really fun. So first off, the way I understand it is there are going to be just like normal Twitch Rival content creator tournaments with a $100,000 prize pool in each region. There's going to be Europe, Latin America, and North america playing it's going to be on april 2nd for europe and latin america and then april 3rd for north america i believe this one you have to be invited to it's going to take place on those days and i think these ones are like your normal twitch rivals where you watch all the big content creators and the big pros go at it it doesn't look like this is one that is going to be open to other players but they said after the kickoff event participating creators in north america will have more chance to compete in the twitch rivals creator series playing fortnite zero build creative and more some of your favorite creators will be hosting five additional tournaments throughout April and May with each creator having their own $10,000 prize pool and custom crafted format. The series culminates in a grand final event, which will include another $100,000 prize pool. Tune in here to catch all the action. Again, I'll be doing a viewing party on my Twitch channel if you want to check it out, but it looks like P-God, Elixir, Somerset, Nick A30, a mystery guest, and then the grand final. So each of them are getting their own tournament and I believe those tournaments are going to be open for you guys to play in. It's still a little bit confusing on how the actual like grand final event's gonna work and i'm also a little bit confused on how this first you know creator tournament is gonna work with who's invited and who isn't but again as more details come out i'll let you know but the main thing you guys need to focus on are these events that are being hosted by the players so april 7th april 13th april 21st april 28th may 12th and then the grand finals are on may 25th so looks like each week starting in april 7th you guys will have a chance to play in a tournament for ten thousand dollars and i'm gonna guess they're gonna go to those 
those regions though and most of these players actually i've just realized everyone except for the mystery guest is na so i don't know if you're going to be able to play from eu it probably won't be region locked but i'm imagining if it's p god elixir somerset and nikkei 30s tournaments they're going to host it on their own regions in na so if you're an na competitor especially keep an eye out these could have some really fun formats i'm going to guess nikkei 30 especially is going to do something wild and wacky and have some fun with it so keep an eye out these are looking pretty cool Preseason has officially ended. We can now grind a champions division again, and you're going to need to because cash cups are starting in less than a week. I'm going to go through all the details on that in a second, but I have to bring up a point I've brought up many times, and I'm not going to stay on it for too long because everything's already been said before. I have no idea why Epic is still doing a preseason. It ruins a lot of the hype for the new season. People wake up. They want to start grinding arena. They want to compete with their friends. They want to see who's winning on the leaderboard. Like, it would be so much more fun if points just reset. I get that Epic tries to say that it's to evaluate the game mode to see you know what should be taken out of competitive and adjusted before tournaments start but nothing changed in this week of preseason epic has made absolutely zero adjustments to the competitive playlist and it's not because they shouldn't there's some big glaring issues i'm not going to talk about the smgs because i truly just think epic is going down the route of the spray meta and if you guys don't like it unfortunately it seems like it is what it is but even excluding the smgs people have been complaining about there is a few items and vehicles that need to be adjusted in the competitive playlist the tanks while not being the worst vehicle, they're not as bad as mechs or the UFOs. I just don't get why they're in competitive like the UFOs. Just leave them in pubs. It makes so much more sense. They're just not a skillful vehicle. They don't really add anything to the game. They're just frustrating and annoying to verse. They're just cheesy. Just they shouldn't be in competitive. The cow catcher, I think, honestly, as cool and fun as an item as it is, I do think it should be removed from competitive because at the moment, it just, I don't see any way they can balance it to be fair. You throw it on a vehicle and you can just mow through entire end games in circles, knocking people in a zone there's almost no repercussions or risk and you find them everywhere if you throw them on the ground not even on a vehicle as you guys know they break all builds and create like an 800 health indestructible crash pad that you can't build on like it just it doesn't belong in competitive i don't see how they can balance it to make it fun it might just be one of those items that just really only belongs in public matches then you have the turrets that are around the map if you've played any scrim or tournament this season you've probably seen it happen people set up on the turrets they shoot a rocket at an enemy in a build it shoots them out of the build and they die to full damage they have infinite ammo you can't shoot them back there is absolutely no risk to reward it's all reward no risk they need to be able to shoot players so you can rotate around the map i absolutely love them for that but they need to stop them shooting rockets in competitive or something because i know they're a bit of fun I don't want all fun taken out of the game, but trust me, if you've watched the tournament, take my word on this. There is, I don't feel like any way to balance them again, unless maybe they only do like 50 or 100 damage to builds in competitive, and then they wouldn't really be worth using. But right now, you can literally infinitely shoot rockets at your opponents in builds, get free surge, kill them, and all they've done is rotate early and base up in a good position. That's their biggest mistake. So basically, right now, unless you're on a blimp, you can't base up if you're within range of a turret, which is absolutely a huge range. Range. So again, something that also should be probably taken out of the game. So there's already a few things that are big issues with competitive that Epic hasn't adjusted in this week, yet we still had a preseason that almost nobody likes. And as I've said, ruins a lot of fun and hype for the new season. So Epic, please, please listen to the player base here. Just stop doing preseasons. I can't think of a single good reason there should be preseason. If Arena was an actual proper ranked game mode, which I've talked about how to do in the past, maybe there should be a preseason because when day one of the new you know, ranked game mode starts, you want the game to be clean. You want everyone to make sure they know what's happening. You want everyone to know the meta and they jump in and they start grinding. But it doesn't feel like that. No one jumps in day one of the Arena Point reset now and is like, okay, I've learned the meta. I'm ready to grind my points because there is no reason to grind Arena Points anymore. No one really cares about doing it. So again, I know you guys don't like the negatives in my video i feel like i'm very very fair on my my criticisms and then my praise of epic the new season has been phenomenal it's brought so many people back the content has been amazing the no build mode while i don't enjoy it fully makes sense to me but pre-season just doesn't make sense we did have cash cups being announced. They went into the game. They're in the compete tab, but they've now been taken out, but you can still see them on Fortnite Tracker. So if you want to find out all the details, go to Fortnite Tracker, but I'll run you through everything now. We have duo cash cups starting in six days and solo cash cups starting in 10 days. Again, with arena points just resetting, you're going to want to grind to champs pretty quickly. There's a chance they drop the duo cash cup requirements to contender division. They've done that in the past when there's a tournament close to arena point reset, but they've also sometimes left at champs with only a week and it leads to some really 
really, really stacked, really good games. So honestly, I'm happy either way. Again, like I said, solo cash cups in 10 days. The format's the same. It's going to be two rounds. You're going to have 10 games, three hours to get top 50 duos or top 100 solos to qualify for round two. That's going to be six set lobby games. The point format's the same and the prize pool's the same. And this is an interesting topic because if you guys have seen my video or my tweets, I have compared the player bases of different regions and talked about how right now the prize pool doesn't make a lot of sense. It needs to be adjusted based on what Epic has based the prize pools on, which was, I think, four seasons ago or five seasons ago. They took all the player bases and they said, this is how we're going to allocate prize pool. The more players equals more prize money, which is one of the more fair ways to do it. Some people aren't happy about that, but I'm not even going to get into a discussion of whether that's how they should base the prize pool. But the fact is that is how they base the prize pools. But the player bases have changed tremendously since then. I compared it and we had regions like Brazil who had less players than Asia, but we're getting four times the prize pool, like just some ridiculous margins that shouldn't exist if that is how they're deciding the prize pool. So it wouldn't even benefit, you know, like any me in any way. I don't compete. I don't play. Uh, the biggest regions to be benefited are going to be Asia and NA West. And yes, I now live in NA West, but I hardly even watch the NA West tournaments. I focus on EU and NA East and those regions aren't really affected. So I don't want people coming at me saying I'm biased and I'm trying to get more prize money for different regions. I have no reason to want a region to get more prize money. I don't compete. I just think Epic needs to be fair about it. If you picked a metric that you were going to base your prize pull off, which is a really big deal, how much money people can win from this game, if that prize pool drastically changes, so does the prize pool. You, you need to readjust this. Epic, you need to fix this up. It's again, another issue that just seems to be getting overlooked by the competitive team right now. All right, guys, that does it for another video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please chuck a like on it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't, and I'll see you in the next one.